Yes, we can. Sure, we can change the world. Sylvia Kacho is the director of Self Schools Uganda, a Ugandan NGO that works to improve girls' access to education. In recognition of 16 days against gender-based violence, Sylvia shares her personal story and commitment to keeping girls safe and improving their access to education. Welcome, Sylvia. Thank you. To start, tell us why you became an activist for keeping girls in school. I'm passionate about human rights and child education. This inspiration came as a result of my personal experience that I went through at the age of 15 when I was forced into early marriage. Following my passion, I denied getting married and requested my relatives not to engage me in such acts, but rather to support me and achieve my career as somebody who is passionate about education. This inspired me to start working in social change and advocate for the rights of girl-child education to make a positive change in my community. So tell us about your organization. Well, South Schools Uganda is an, uh, a non-governmental organization that works to improve uh, children's access to quality education with an intent to develop them into change makers who will contribute positively to their communities. And um, under Safe Schools Uganda, we've been running a project for the last two years called Keep Me in School. So can you help us understand what gender-based violence or GBV means? Um, from my personal view, gender-based violence comes in many forms. Physical violence, rape and sexual assault, child and uh, forced marriages, denying resources and services, and physical assault. So gender-based violence can affect anyone, regardless of their economic or social status. And how are Ugandan girls impacted by this? Um, the average Ugandan is a 14-year-old girl living in rural area. She has a one in a four risk of becoming pregnant during adolescence, is at high risk of being in an early marriage, and will likely drop out of school before reaching the secondary level. So she's also twice as likely to be living with HIV uh, as a boy her age. So is there a connection between keeping girls in school and gender-based violence? Yes, the connection is there. When girls stay longer, in school, they are less likely to contract HIV, have lower pregnancy rates, and are often less vulnerable to domestic violence. As well, they are staying longer in school empowers them to sustain themselves and families economically. So what advice would you give a girl, say, if her family is preventing her from going to school? Uh, as a victim who went through uh, early marriage, I would uh, advise the young girls to engage with school head teachers, religious leaders, charities and other voluntary organizations as they are committed to supporting education in such an environment. Also, they should take the matter to the local leaders because through the local leaders there would be support from the government to develop policies and plans that reduce the cost of education for poor families. Because from my personal experience, it is because of poverty that girls are not having access to education, but rather are pushed into early marriages. Be sure to come back for more inspiring stories from young African leaders on the Yali Voices podcast. Join the Yali Network at yali.state.gov and be part of something bigger. Our theme music is E Go Happen by Grace Jerry and produced by her friends, the Presidential Precinct. The Yali Voices podcast is brought to you by the U.S. Department of State and is part of the Young African Leaders Initiative, which is funded by the U.S. government. Thanks, everybody.